today we'll be talking about activity-based costing. So activity-based costing is where we first basically categorize the costs into cost pools based on activities. So we look at the various activities within an organization and then we determine what is driving the activity, what is causing the activity to actually exist in the first place. And then based on the cost drivers, we allocate it to the products because then we determine whether the products are actually making use of the particular activity. So this is important because sometimes not all products will go through a, a certain activity. We might have products that's, that, that's machine-based and other products that's not machine-based. So therefore, any cost related to machinery, we can't really allocate to products that's, that do not make use of, of machinery. Okay, so this is, this is important to remember that we first need to find activities. So we find activities such as machining, such as um, inspection. Okay, so those are all costs that will be incurred in the production department. So we need to find the activities first and then we allocate the various costs to the activities and then we find cost drivers so what is actually driving the cost? So if we have inspection costs, for example, the number of inspections that the quality controller performs during the year or during the month, that would be a cost driver. The more inspections that the quality controller will perform, the higher the costs will be. So the number of inspections, that is an example of a cost driver. Also, if um, we have delivery costs, right? Um, delivery costs are basically allocated based on your order size. The more you order, the more you will incur in terms of delivery. So if you've got a product that uses a whole lot of components that you have to order regularly on a weekly or on a monthly basis, and you have another product where you order components only every second month, then it would be unfair and inaccurate to just split the delivery cost between the two products. So therefore we need to first determine how many deliveries are required for each particular product. And therefore the more deliveries, the more orders that's placed on a particular product the more cost must be allocated to that particular product. Okay, so activity-based costing is all about identifying activities and then identifying what drives the activities. And then we look at each individual product and we, we determine how much of each activity is consumed or used by each product. And that is how we allocate the overheads. Okay, so I'll be looking at, at the example to explain further how to calculate the costs um, of a product using activity-based costing. So in this example, we have information that relates to a company making garden sheds. So there's two types. There's a six by six shed and there's a four by four shed, so a slightly smaller one. The raw materials per unit, so there's 36 meters for the 6 by 6 one, and then they use 16 meters for the 4 by 4 one. The direct labor hours per unit, so it takes 6 hours to make the 6 by 6 shed, and it takes 4 hours to make the 4 by 4 shed. Then they also use machine, so the machinery required for six by six sheds is one hour and then 0 0.4 hours for the four by four shed. So it's likely that they use machinery to, to cut the wood that is used when they make the sheds. Then we also have production runs and the production runs per year. 
is 50 for the six by six sheds and then this and it's 75 for the four by four sheds. Production runs are usually related to the number of units that you that you make. So just the very next line, it states annual production of six by six sheds is 500 units and of four by four sheds is 750 units. So basically what, what will happen in the production department is that they have one machine, one, one type of machine, and that machine must be, um, how can I say, they must set it, that, right? They must adjust the settings of the machine to make provision for every kind of product that they make. So for example, the six by six shed will be bigger. So therefore the measurements on the machine must be set so that it cuts the wood correctly. Six meters by six meters, right? And when they make the four by four sheds, then the setting must be changed so that wood are cut at four meters and not at six meters. Obviously also making allowance like for, for wastage. So it might be cut at 4.2 meters or 4.1 meter. Okay. So each time that you make a different product, you need to adjust the settings on the machine so that it basically cuts it a certain way. So what would happen generally is that the machine will be changed on a weekly basis or on a daily basis. So then they will run the machine for a certain amount of time in order to make one type of product for that week. And then the next week or a few days later, they will change the settings of the machine to make another, another type of product. So when we have production runs, that means that that is how many times they need to change the setting because that is how production will run during the year. So 50 times they will use the machine during the year to make six by six sheds. And then 75 times during the year, they will use the machine to make four by four sheds. Okay, so every time they make a different product, they need to change the setting of the machine. So usually they will get in, um, if they don't, if they don't have a department that deals with that, then they will get in someone to adjust the settings. Then we are also given direct production costs. So we've got direct material that's given to us per meter. So please note that it's not given to us per product, given to us per meter. And then the direct labor is given to us per hour. Also not per product, but per hour. And then we have the annual production overheads. So it's 629,000 Rand in total, but it's broken up into four different um, activities. Okay, for with activity-based costing, you will see that the overheads are basically categorized according to activities. So first we have the machine setups. So that it costs, it's costing them 24,000 Rand to change the settings of the machinery for the year. And then they also have machine running costs. So that would include your electricity and it would include your maintenance and your repairs. Then we also have supervisory costs. And then there's inspection. And that makes up the total of 629,000 Rand. Okay, so let's look now at how to calculate the costs. So first we're going to use activity-based costing to allocate the manufacturing overhead cost to each product. So there's two products, right? There's the six by six shed and there's the four by four shed. So we need to allocate the manufacturing overheads to these two products. So firstly, we will take down the overheads. So the overheads that's given in the scenario
Okay, so that's the four. So then we just add the cost. And then we have to determine what is driving the costs. So what is the cost driver? Okay, for machine setups, that will have to be the production runs per year because they will change the setup with each production run. The fewer production runs, the lesser the costs. The production runs will be the cost driver. For machine running costs, for machine running costs, we will use machine hours. Okay. Machine hours, because this would mostly be electricity. So therefore, the period of time that they use the machine, that will basically determine how much electricity or machine running costs they will incur. Even if it's repairs, like if you run it for long periods of time, then it will require more repairs. That is why machine hours will be the cost driver for machine running costs. For supervisors. Okay, so the only thing. The only thing we have here where there can be a link, because remember supervisors, that would be the people that oversee production. So the only link here would be the direct labor hours. Okay, so now let's allocate the costs. So the total cost or machine setup cost is 24,000. Okay, that is what we need to share between the two products. We are going to share or allocate it using the number of production runs. So for the six by six shed, there's 50, 50 out of a total of 125, right? The 50 plus the 75 is 125 in total. So it's 24,000 times 50 divided by 124, I uh, five. And then for the four by four shed, it will be 24,000 times 75 divided by 125. Okay, always do a reasonability check. The four by four sheds must get more of the cost because there's more production runs making the four by four shed. So please always do a reasonability check before you continue.
Okay, next one is the machine running costs. So this is a total of 120,000. Okay, so this multiplied by the machine hours required for the six by six shed. Now, here you have to be careful because we are allocating the total costs. So therefore, we need to use the total machine hours. Not the machine hours per unit, because that is just for one six by six shed. There's one hour for one six by six shed. We have to allocate it based on the total hours that's required. So if I calculate the total, then it would be one hour multiplied by 500, because that is what they will be making. They will be making 500 for the year. That is what annual production means, right? So they will make 500 six by six sheds, and each one requires one hour. So therefore the total hours required to make the six by six sheds will be 500 hours. Okay, so for the six by six shed, it's one hour multiplied by 500 units. So that would be 500 hours. Okay. And then the four by four shed, so that is 0 0.4 hours multiplied by 750 units. That one is 300 hours. So therefore, when we allocate the 120,000, we will say 120,000 times 500 divided by 800. Always remember to divide by the total. So 500 plus 300 is 800. So 75,000 of the 120,000 will be allocated to the six by six sheds. And then formula, 120,000 times 300 divided by 800 must be allocated to the four by four sheds. Okay, so again, a reasonability check. Fewer hours are spent on the four by four sheds. So therefore, you will have 45,000 of the 120,000 allocated to it. So less of the cost must be allocated to the four by four sheds because they consume fewer hours.
The next one is the direct labor hours. So here again, we have to calculate the total direct labor hours because once again, we are given the direct labor hours per unit. So for one shed, we need to find the total hours required. So for labor hours, we need to take the labor hours required. So for the six by six shed, it's six hours. Six hours times 500 units. And for the four by four shed, it is four hours. So four hours times 750 units. Same amount of time, so that's an equal share. Okay, so the formula, so we have 360,000, which is the total supervisory cost, multiplied by 3,000 hours, divided by 6,000 hours, or half if you prefer. And then you have the same allocation for the four by four shed. Next is inspection. So we're going to base it on the annual production. So that's given to us. We've got 500 units and 750 units. So the total cost is 125,000. We're going to multiply that by 500 and divide it by 500 plus 750, okay, so 500 plus 750 is 1,250. And then for the four by four sheds, it's 125,000 multiplied by 750 divided by 1,250. Okay, again, reasonability check. They are making more of the four by four sheds. Therefore, more of the inspection cost must be allocated to the four by four sheds. They're making more, therefore they will be inspecting more. And then we total the costs.
Once you have totaled the cost, please just add the two together. So if you add these two together, then you must get 629,000 because that is the total overheads that we've allocated. Right? The total overheads is 629,000 rand. That is what we shared between the two sheds. So therefore, if you add those two amounts, then you must get 629,000 rand. Okay, so next we can calculate the manufacturing overhead cost of each shed. So manufacturing overhead cost of each shed. So to calculate that, we will start with the manufacturing or the total allocated manufacturing overheads. So for the six by six sheds, it's 314,600 rand. And for the four by four ones, it is 314,400 rand. So that's the total allocated manufacturing overheads. We need to allocate it to each shed. So therefore we need to divide it by the total units. So there's 500 of the six by six ones and there's 750 of the four by four ones. So then we'd say the total manufacturing overheads divided by the total units produced. And that will give me the manufacturing overhead cost per unit. So it's the total allocated overheads divided by the total units produced. And then lastly, I can now calculate the production cost of each shed. So please remember there's three components when we calculate the production cost of a product. It's your direct material, your direct labor, and your allocated manufacturing overheads. Or simply manufacturing overheads if you prefer, but please remember it is allocated.
Okay, so direct material, they say that the six by six shed requires 36 meters. Okay, so 36 meters. And each meter costs 50 rand. So therefore, for the six by six shed, we'll have to take the 36 meters required and multiply it by the 50 rand. And then for the four by four shed, it will be 16 meters multiplied by the 50 rand. Okay, so please remember that what we were given is the cost per meter. So if they're going to use wood, then they need to buy the wood and the supplier of the wood will charge them per meter. So we have to look at how many meters they require for each product. So therefore for, this, for the six by six shed, it's stated that it requires 36 meters. Therefore, the cost to make the entire shed will be 36 meters multiplied by 50 rand. So it's 1,800 rand in total. And the four by four shed will be 16 meters times 50 rand, which will be 800 rand in total. For the direct labor, again, we are given a rate per hour. It's not going to take one hour to make these things. So therefore, we need to multiply that 60 rand per hour with the number of hours that it will take to make the sheds. So for the six by six shed, it's stated that they need six hours. So six hours multiplied by the rate per hour, which is 60 rand. And for the four by four shed, it's four hours multiplied by the rate, which is 60 rand. And then we just need to put in the allocated manufacturing overheads, which we've calculated here in part two. So this is per unit, it's 629 rand and 20 cents per unit. So I'm going to take that as is. And for the four by four shed, it's 419 rand and 20 cents. And then I can just total the three costs. Okay, so your direct material plus your direct labor plus your allocated overheads will give you the total production costs. 